Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're doing Cornell again. I couldn't be happier about it. Thank you for your patience. We're going to do Jack Straw today. Now, yes, I've heard this before. Uh, if you guys are new to this channel, um, I start, I stop, try to show you some things musically that are happening in here that you can take with you and use with your band. So this is courtesy of Owen Schaefer. Owen, thanks for being a subscriber on GuitarGate and taking the lessons and courses. You make it all possible. He says... I think you'd enjoy Jerry's chicken picking solos and slides into triads. This is why I fell in love with the dead end guitar, so hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Thanks from Northern Virginia. Dude, thank you. And uh, for all you other subscribers out there on the website, click this button when you get a chance to see this. It says videos. My partner Matthew made a whole section, so now we're going to start uploading every video on the site at no extra charge, ad free, 4K even the ones that get blocked, which is usually about one a week that you never, ever get to see. So if you don't want to get your 15 ad breaks in the middle of a guitar solo, you're already taking my lessons and courses, watch them here. Here you go. All right, this is Jack Straw, live at Barton Hall, Cornell, Ithaca, Ithaca New York, 5877. Hit the button. Jack Straw. forgot how good these Betty boards sound. You can hear everything. And yeah, it's important in, in, in every genre of music, but I hate to say it's rare, but it's rare to hear dead recordings that you can really hear every instrument extremely well. And it's so important because learning to become an active listener within your band is arguably the most important skill we can have as a musician. And one of the things, I would say the thing, that that now I love about the dead, but also prevented me from getting into the dead before, was that it's different every night. It's that it's that, you know, it could be fast, it could be slow, you could be you could be real noty here, it could be very sparse there. So many things could be different. Um, and that's like such a thing to celebrate. And so when you hear a recording like this where you really get to hear all the different nuances man it's such an opportunity for you all out there to listen to the other people in the band and not just learning the guitar parts i implore you all if you take nothing else from this video or this channel is to get past the tabs get past the this is how it's supposed to be played you know, it's get yourself into the basic framework and then listen to where there's space for you. Let me show you a little of what I'm talking about here. Now, harmonically, we're in the neighborhood of E. It starts with this cascading sequence. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, right? Now, I don't know if that's exactly right. The point is, I hear it landing on E major. That major third sticks out. So when you're arranging it with your band, make sure someone lands on the root, someone lands on the fifth, and figure it out. But either way, it's a sequence of four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, in E major. Right? Now listen to Phil. So right
right there. Your chords go one, two, six, four. Now, you can look at all the different tabs, you can watch all the different lessons, and you can listen to different eras and different time periods, and it'll all be different. The point is, in here, you hear Phil go, walk straight down, six, flat six, five, four, and because he does it like that, you as a guitar player or keyboard, you can get away with just the C sharp minor, A, because all that movement, all that extra space is being filled by the bass player. Now, if you kind of like an OTO kind of bass player, where it's kind of in the middle, not so noty, but not super sparse, you, you do what you see Mayer do a lot, right? You get this, right? Throw a B in there. So you don't get the full descending chromatic line, but you get a little thing to get over there. And on the other side, if you have a very sparse style bass player, or he just happens to be playing sparse this time, you can go, where he just does that kind of bass thing. You can, you know, throw a little, throw a little Jerry kind of flare in there to fill up that space in the back. I'm telling you, being an active listener is so important. And that's one of the best things about this record. You just hear everything. We can share what we got of you. This is so wild. Okay, perfect example of something that I really only think of the dead when they do this. I think they just write these songs and make it work <laughs> and then just figure out how to sell them. So we're in E major. We have D sharps all over the place. And then out of nowhere, seemingly, out of nowhere, we get this E major, B minor, B major would be in key, we'd have a D sharp, the third, right? But no, you get a D. And then just because you like it so much, you get a full D major chord. Same function, different root note, same function. Right, so you got to A. And then for this turnaround, if you will, E major, G sharp minor, D. So it's almost like we're borrowing from A. It's like E major to E mixo. So E with a D sharp to E with a D. It's a nice little parallel grab there. But this is the part I want you to pay attention to. If you ever hear a band cover this tune and it sounds kind of squirrely and you're like, ah, it's almost there. It, I don't know what it is. It's someone playing a D and someone playing a D sharp. It's somebody getting hung up in here. It's E major, right? Cause you just came from this B minor to D to A. So there's obviously a D in there, right? You're an E major, G sharp minor. What is that bad boy? That is a D sharp is the fifth of that. Down to D. And then you have A major, which of course has a C sharp in that. So you have this motion. Now, even though you might not hear Phil or anybody else voice lead that close right here, those are four chromatic notes that you're getting one after the other that are chord tones in each one of those chords. So unless you plan it out, ladies and gentlemen, unless you plan it out, right? We're in, we're in D here, we got a D here, we got a D sharp here, back to D, C sharp. Unless you plan it out, that's where you're going to get muddy. I guarantee you, all you out there that cover this tune, you're like, man, that's a jump sound too big going from, you know, right? And something gets messed up. It, it, the answer is within D and D sharp, I'm telling you.
And then, again, the coolest thing happens here, and it's so subtle. It's so subtle. The second time around on the turnaround, E major. And now instead of going G sharp minor, you still have that D sharp in there, but it is now the major third of B. That is B major right there. And then instead of going from D to A, it jumps right to A major. So now you get this. I know, I know. So however you choose to arrange it with your band, just know that that, ladies and gentlemen, again, is a B major, which means you have D sharp. Can't stress it enough. Can't stress it enough. Don't just learn the chords. Don't just learn the tabs. Don't just learn the parts. Learn the one thing learn that makes that change. It's D versus D sharp. That's the modulation learn where the parts are, and communicate it with your band, right? This is that part. You play this, I'll play this, work it out, because those are those weird little segments that, like, again, I feel like only the dead really does. It's wild. carried away there. Uh, this little part, it's all about suspending the third and releasing it. Um, and you can do this, you, you, you can do this as, as, as uh, just a regular chord, like uh, A over E, right? You can do the full E major over E, depending on how many pieces you have in your band or how big you want to do it. But the whole vibe of this up-tempo piece is you're suspending the E chord, means you're suspending the third, so you're playing the A instead of G sharp. Again, you can do it small. You can do... Depends on how big you want to do it, right? These are the things, get past the tabs. Then jump up. Now, we go to a two but this is not F sharp minor like it was before. Now we have A into A sharp. Major third. That's the thing to pay attention to. And suss it out again. Now if you want to, I, I feel like I would at least try this. I would try to... Get some of those open strings, so it'd be like an F sharp seven, but sus. So even though when I put that A sharp in there, leave the B above it. I don't know. Maybe it'd work. Maybe it would clash. I don't know. My gut instinct would be to try though. Um, and then when it goes back into the solo section, right? It's E, B. Oh, sorry, E, A. I can't speak. E, D, B. A. Now remember, uh, D major and B minor are basically the same chord. They have the exact same function, just the root is different. The upper triad is the same. So you're obviously focusing on D. So you have E with a D in it. So E is your focus. But. Uh, but you're gonna have a D, and then it goes to the A. C sharp is gonna be kind of how you outline that change to that A. So that's kind of what you're thinking. E major pentatonic. Going to D. And then you wanna pay attention to where your C sharp is. 
go into that A. Let's see what Jerry does. <laughs> yeah, I love I love how he does this here. So he's coming in. Regular E major pentatonic. One, two, three, five, six, one, two, right? But then he's choosing to, to land on this F sharp, which of course is the uh, major third of D, right when it goes to it. Triads, triads, triads. Connecting triads with with melodies. That's That's the game here. Really wild what's happening in there. Sounds like he just went straight up to the major, to the, just the E major triad. And then, went and grab the D there, and then A. But for the most part, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of just, I mean, it doesn't even really go up there. It's, it's really just, little D like that. But you know, when you listen to these earlier, I know 77 is not super early, but a lot of these earlier um, uh, Jerry solos, it's much more key centered than it is chord. To, it doesn't have a lot of those chord scale jumps that you get in the late 80s and certainly early 90s. Now we're playing for life. This is such a cool part that happens in here. Out of nowhere, seemingly, okay, it goes from A to D major to G. Now we haven't had a G in here all day. We've been G sharping our faces off, right? It's a major third of V. Right? Now, so what this is, is you're modulating again. Now, you could say that we're, you know, going from A to A mixo. You could say we're going straight to D major. Of course, those would be the same thing. But really, you just want to think about the triads here. D, A, F sharp. F sharp becomes G. A becomes B. D stays the same. That's your common thread. Throughout that. And then this whole G goes down chromatically. The whole chord goes down to E major. Super cool. I, lo I always love when you just land on those thirds. Right after you came from the G and D, much space is in there you get that one run from phil then he holds it down and then jerry just -da -da -da. it's it's that's what i'm saying you get to know the people you play with right you listen to them and you react in real time that's the magic here and i just these betty boards are tremendous <laughs> Straight. 
love it. So so you're kind of he's kind of starting, you know, those real quick kind of staccato signature Jerry kind of stabs, but then you jump into these double stops. And so he knows where the co chords are here. He, he he's thinking chord tones and triads the entire time through here. He jumps up, it switches to that D, grabs that A and F sharp, fifth and major third of D respectively. Kind of outlines it. Okay, all right. So you can hear you can hear when he's really being exploratory and pushing, and where he's kind of like falling back, uh, and like you're right on the rails again. This little move right here. This little. Let's see if I can pinpoint it. That. I love it. So. He's on C sharp, right? Of course, is your major third of A, right? Your major sixth of the V. So then <laughs> pushing into D, right? And then grabbing that F sharp on top, that major third of D, and then bringing it back down. That that is such a squirrely and cool thing to do, and you can hear that it's like, ooh, something happened there. But you can also tell it's like. I can envision myself in his brain, just like, oh yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know, but, but yeah, I can sell this, I can land this, I, I can get out of this. Right, right. So do that same. Just tag it again, right on the tonic. And then you're back there. That D. check my time real quick yeah all right so there you go jack straw live at barton hall um i want to implore all of you i'm going to state it again if you made it this far if you made it through this 25 minutes just take this to heart please please get past the tabs get past the chord sheets okay Listen to these records, especially this one, because you can hear it so well. And listen to all the different things they do over those same changes, which you would write the same way on a piece of paper. Right? Sometimes you're adding the color. Sometimes you're adding the support. Right? Sometimes you're voice leading. Sometimes you're staying on the root. Having these conversations 
in rehearsal with your band, okay? Don't D on my D sharp, right? Leave me space to walk down here at least once tonight. And I'll do the same for you. He's talking like that instead of yeah, it's B minor, D, A, E, watch me for the changes, right? Having that real communication based on based on the actual subtle changes that are happening there and then purposefully and intently working together and listening with each other, to each other, making eye contact on stage to make sure you all get that stuff. That's the magic of this music for, for me. Like that, that really is what it's all about. So I hope you take that to heart. And that's it. I'm psyched to get back into this. Thank you all for being so patient with me. And uh, know that I love you. Know that I appreciate you. And who gave me this? Owen, thanks for being a subscriber on the site. Anybody else out there, you want to be like Owen, you're curious about my lessons, courses, you want to support the channel, you want to get ad-free videos, even though they're ones that are blocked, and just make all this possible, click the first link in the description. It's called GuitarGate. It's my life's work. And more than anything, it's a community of people you'll find over there posting videos, helping each other, pick this thing up just a little bit every day and try to get a little bit better. I'm doing it, and I hope you'll do it with me. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great day. Cheers. Love it.